let's talk to Ed Carpenter first about team owner Ed Carpenter rather than driver, even though you have your driver uniform on. One of your drivers, new drivers for 2020 just sitting here. How did the process of bringing Re Renus and, and Connor come and how has it been so far? I mean, it's always a, a long and detailed process anytime you're changing both drivers, but you know, specifically with Connor, you know, it, I felt pressure for a long time and heard from fans for a long time that we needed to hire Connor. It wasn't something that we were ever ignoring. You know, I've, I've watched him for a long time, you know, way back to, you know, when he was in Europe and his Indy Lights times when he was teammates with Joseph. So he's, he's always been a talent. You know, it's been unfortunate kind of how long and winding his road's been to, to get to a good opportunity again. But really the stars just aligned with, with as, like he mentioned, you know, with the Air Force really seeing the benefit of the program that they've been building over the past couple of years and wanting to take that to the next step. And fortunately, we were able to become part of that conversation and, and put a program together. So very, very excited about it, you know, and, and hope and pray that we do a solid job and we can continue building that program even further. I suspect that given your respective families and where they've lived, you've known Connor virtually his whole life. I mean, yeah. maybe four yeah. or five years old. Yeah, a long, long, long time. I mean, I, I tested my first IndyCar for Panther and was really involved with that team when Doug was, was an owner of Panther Racing. Um, so, you know, I've known Derek and Beth and Doug and, and Connor for forever, really. So, you know, Connor talks like he's been around for a long time, but you know, he hasn't been around, around that long yet. So let's talk about Renus for just a second. The, the word that's described him that I hear most often is just fast. He's fast. Yeah, he's definitely, he's definitely shown us, you know, on every occasion that he's gotten in a car so far that, that he's fast, that he's quick. Um, you know, he picks things up very quickly. He got comfortable very quickly. You know, I'd also describe him as, you know, very excited. He's a very excited young man. And, you know, that, I think that's, since we're talking team owner and not teammate right now, I think that's the biggest challenge is harnessing that excitement and, and speed and, and making him productive, teaching him and helping him learn all the, the little details that it's going to take for him to to take that speed and, and compete with the savvy veterans that, that are so dominant in the speed, in the series. And your prospects for the season? Uh, I'm, I'm excited. I don't know that I'll visibly show my excitement like, like <laughs> Renus and Connor, um, but I, I feel very good about things. You know, it's, it's, un I, it's uncommon for a team to kind of overhaul their driver lineup, but it felt like the, the right time to do it. And we needed, we needed something fresh, but, Outside of that, the team is, is very much the same. So even though we've got a lot of change behind the wheel, everyone at the shop has been you know, working extremely hard since before last season ended really getting prepared for this year. So you know, this is an important week to, to come out and, and see how we start. You know, when I look back to last year, the code open test, we were awful. And you know, I think it kind of was how our year started a little bit. So we need to, need to come out strong here. Joey? You kind of just touched on it, but I mean, what do you see with Connor and Renus that maybe you didn't have before? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think it's an interesting and I think complimentary duo, you know, trio, if you include myself. You know, you've got a, a 19 year old that doesn't really know anything other than how to drive the wheels off of it and push 110% every lap. Connor and I have been around and and have experience. So I think, I think we'll all be able to push each other in different ways and challenge each other in different ways, teach each other different things. You know, if, if Connor and I can capture some of, of Renus's youthful enthusiasm, that's going to make us better. And if, if we can pass on our wisdom as, as more experienced guys that have been around, it's just going to accelerate Renus's growth. So I'm excited about how, how we're all working together and getting along. Still a long way to go, but uh, it has a good feel so far. As you being a team owner driver, does it get easier the longer you do it to go from team owner ed to driver ed and back to team owner ed? It get, yeah, I mean, you get more accustomed to it. You know, the cadence of the season is is the same. Um, you know, like anything, the more the more you do it, the more prepared you are. You know, 
even with with off tra off season training, and you know I've got to be I'm training towards May. Everyone else is training towards March, so my cadence is just a little different. Um, but it, it definitely gets more normal. I think it helps a ton that that our leadership within the team is virtually unchanged, other than when Derek left. But you know having that continuity makes it easier because I know I know everyone's role. They know. They know my schedule and what I do day to day, when I'm there, when I'm not, why. Um, so it, it gets, it definitely is more natural now than it was the first couple of years. Bruce, how different has uh, Tony been since the sale, and, and how unusual is it for you to enter your first IndyCar Series season where the Coleman George family is not the owners of the speed one? Um, you know, honestly, as far as Tony goes, I don't, I don't know that I've noticed a huge change. I mean, those of you that know Tony, you know, he's kind of who he is, who he is, and some people like that, some people don't. But you know, I think I think he's at peace with everything. You know, I can't personally, as a son, say that I've I've seen a big difference. You know, maybe more relaxed now that the process is through versus in the middle of it. Um, for me, thinking about racing there with the change of ownership. To be honest, it doesn't really feel any different. You know, I, I get asked a lot of times at, at events like this every year, you know, you know, did, what would it mean for you to win Indy with your family owning the place? And I've always said it's, it doesn't mean any more to me than anyone else. Like, we're all, we all want to be Indy car drivers because of the Indy 500. And, you know, my connection has always been a competitor to it. You know, I've never worked at the Speedway. Well, I worked at the Brickyard Crossing when I was like 13. Washing, washing golf carts, but you know, wouldn't call that a career. Uh, you know, but my connection to the track has always been as a competitor, and I think as competitors, drivers, team owners, members of the media, you know, when, when we all go there, we all feel like we are part of it and we own part of it in a way, and that remains unchanged. So I don't, I don't really feel my connections any different. I haven't asked you, but the first moment somebody said to you that they were considering selling to Roger Penske. Or I guess to anyone. What was your reaction? My Mine reaction, was wow. Yeah, I, my reaction was much different when when Roger became part of the conversation than some of the other conversations that, that were had, and it made me feel a whole lot better. Good. Nathan, um, as an owner and driver, um, what are you looking for with the air screen testing um, on the track on Tuesday and Wednesday? What are some of the most important things that you feel like you need to see out of it uh, with your cars to be comfortable with those two cars going to St. Pete in March? I think the two biggest things for me are one, you know, visibility and traffic. All the testing that has been done has really been done with really just one car. They've had two cars out a little bit, but they haven't really run together for that much or that long. You know, that's that's the biggest unknown for me. You know, so many oval races, whether you're Texas, Iowa, Indy, you know, if you're not starting in the first couple rows, you know, we're, we're pulling tear-offs the first handful of laps. So, you know, I am nervous to run 90 laps at Iowa and maybe not being able to see all that well. You know, that, that that's something that I need to get comfortable with. You know, and I think obviously the it's going to be a big problem this week with as cool as it is down here, but I think, you know, there's still a lot to learn and comfort levels to, to be had with the cooling side of it. I think that'll be easier to overcome, but just getting used to the new process, you know, visually just looking through it when it's clean and everything else, it's no problem. Obviously the safety, the safety gains of protecting us from debris is, is, is great, you know, but I, I do need to get comfortable with just how bad the visibility is going to be at the end of the stint and whether or not that's going to create new problems. Paul? You're entering year 17 as a driver. Um, and yeah, I know. Many years <laughs> as, a, as, a, you know, as a driver and owner. What keeps the motivation at this point of your career so high to stay in the seat? Uh, I mean, pretty simply the Indy 500. You know, it's pretty easy to stay motivated when when you have a great team behind you and great partners behind you that give you a chance to go be competitive there. And, you know, I get asked every every single off season how much longer I'm going to race. And, you 
you know, I, Jim, Jim Ayalo asked me that a couple years ago, and I, in a very smart ass type of way, I said, you know, I don't have an expiration date stamped on my bottom, right? I, I don't know, but you know, I, I feel like I'm still competitive there. I still feel like I'm a factor and have have the ability to go win that race and be fast there. So as long as that's the case, you know, I'm, I'm going to be here, whether it's 17 or 20 or. 25, who knows? I don't think I'll make it as far as Avery did, but who knows? Well, Take you you outlasted the gym by Ellen. <laughs> yeah, I did. No, <laughs> I hope I'm Nathan. I know. Last one here from Nathan. Um, with, when it comes to Connor, um, have you guys had any conversations or have you cleared him at all to pursue any other opportunities for those other four oval races for this year? Uh, it's something we've talked about for sure. You know, it'd have to be the right opportunity. Um, I am a driver, even though I'm an owner, so, you know, I care about all these guys and their complete futures. You know, I just want to make sure whatever whatever happens that, that the Air Force and, and Ed Carpenter Racing is the priority and that we're on the same page of what we're trying to do long term. But, you know, I, I think it's important for drivers to be driving and, and staying, staying sharp. So, you know, if, if there's opportunities for Connor, you know, I think that'd be a great thing as long as it's the right situation. Are you set with three cars in Indy? Any chance for four? Um, I don't think there's a chance for four. <laughs> okay. Figure that's the question. Yeah. No one will ask, so okay. throw yeah. that one out there. <laughs> I always become part of that conversation, and I'm always no fun. You're, you're pretty good fun. Oh, you're getting a little gray, kind of like somebody else. Yeah. I don't know if it's the, the ownership or the kids or everything. It's not well, it's worth it. They hide. They hide in there fairly well still. Well, you're in zone defense with three kids as opposed to man-to-man, -man, so. Yeah, it's 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 actually the best part of the off season is, is running around with the kids. Both boys play hockey. My daughter's a gymnast now, so. You know, most weekends, Heather and I aren't together. You know, there's some weekends where they're all three in different different places, even states, but um, it's fun. We've got great parents that help us out too, and it's fun chasing them around, watching them do what they want to do. Go have fun on the rest of the day. I'll see you last. Thank you, Thanks, Thank Ed. you.